ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ हीट इन दिस लेसन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ हीट एन ऑब्जेक्ट मूव एंड गेट्स डिस्प्लेस्ड वेन फोर्स इज अप्लाइड टू इट वेन डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑकर्स वर्क इज डन एनर्जी इज नीडेड फॉर डूइंग द वर्क द कैपेसिटी टू डू वर्क इज कॉल्ड एनर्जी वेर डज दिस एनर्जी कम फ्रॉम Energy comes from the food we eat. Have you observed the pressure cooker on the gas burner in the kitchen? There is water in the cooker. When the water in the cooker is heated for some time, we hear the whistle of the cooker. The weight on the puzzle gets lifted and some steam gushes out. Why does this happen? The water forms steam and the steam is able to lift the weight it means that the water gets energy due to the heat this tells us that heat is a form of energy there are many substances around us we can classify them as ice cold water lukewarm water hot water etc We can tell by touching or comparing these substances that ice is colder than water and that hot water is hotter than lukewarm water. When you are ill, your mother touches your forehead to get an idea of how high your fever is. Then she measures your body temperature with a thermometer and if it is higher than usual she takes you to a doctor just as water always flows from higher level to a lower level heat also flows higher temperature to lower temperature this is called the transfer of heat the transfer of heat from one place to another takes place in three ways one conduction two conduction of heat let us perform a small activity to learn how conduction of heat takes place take an iron rod clean it with cloth and stick small blobs of wax on it at intervals of 1 cm fix a small iron nail upright in each blob of wax hold one end of the rod over candle flame take care to wrap the end you hold in a piece of cotton cloth soon you will see the nails fixed in the wax falling off one by one the temperature of the flame is higher than that of the rod therefore heat is transferred from the flame to the rod the heat first reaches the nail which is nearest to the flame and that nail fall off one by one starting from the one nearest to the flame the one that is farthest falls off last the transfer of heat from one end of the substance to another is called conduction the substance through which conduction takes place is called the medium let us use two similar rods one of iron and one of copper with nails attached to both the rods at equal distances using blobs of wax hold both the rods over a candle flame we see that the nails from the copper rod also fall in the same order but sooner than the ones from the iron rod that is the first nail to fall is one from copper rod this tells us that heat travels faster in copper rod thus we see that copper is a better conductor of heat than iron solid substances like copper aluminum iron are made up of many small particles these particles cannot leave their places but are able to move a little in their own place this is called the vibration of these particles if the particles are packed close to each other then the speed of conduction is greater whereas 
if the particles are further apart heat gets conducted slowly thus we can make the following inferences a medium is necessary for conduction of heat the speed of conduction of heat through a medium depends upon the medium as the particles of a medium conduct heat they only vibrate in their own place they do not leave their original place convection of heat let us perform a small activity to learn how convection of heat takes place take a beaker half filled with water and heat it add some crystals of potassium permanganate to the water observe the water in the beaker carefully you will see streams of colored water moving upwards from the bottom of the beaker and then down again the color will make the currents of water clearly visible to you as you begin to heat the water the water near the bottom of the beaker gets heated first hot water is always lighter than the cold water hence the heated water goes straight upwards and the cold water at the top moves down from the sides to take its place thus heat is transferred upwards by means of currents these currents are called convection currents transfer of heat in this way is called convection convection takes place only in fluid mediums that is in liquids and gases the above experiments tells us that like conduction a medium is necessary for convection too in the process of convection a particles of the medium leave their place and become part of the convection currents let us perform a small activity to see if heat is supplied to the upper layers of water in the beaker will all the water in the beaker gets heated by convection currents wrap a piece of wax in a piece of netting and place it at the bottom of test tube fill half test tube with water and hold it slant now heat the upper part of the tube for some time observe the piece of wax at the bottom of the tube even though the upper part was heated the heat did not reach the wax a convection current always travels upwards hence the heat in the upper layers escapes into the air in the form of vapor as a result the wax does not get any heat and therefore does not melt even when the water at the top of the tube is boiling radiation of heat let us perform a small activity to learn how we get radiation of heat place a table lamp on a table and light it hold your hand above it after some time it will feel warm now take your hand below the lamp it feels warm here too we can see that heat is felt above because of the convection current in the air why is it warm below the lamp we know the convection currents flow upwards and the medium of air is not sufficient for conduction of heat the heat of the sun travels over lakhs of kilometers before it reaches the earth even when there is no medium in the space between the earth and the sun this mode of transfer of heat in the absence of a medium is called radiation every warm substance continuously emits heat in all directions around itself all substances whether solid liquid or gas are sources of such radiation when this radiated heat falls on a substance some of it gets reflected while some is absorbed when it is absorbed the temperature of the substance rises let us perform a small activity 
take two tin boxes of same size and shape. Paint one white and the other black. Fill water up to the same level in both the boxes and close the lids. Place the boxes in the sun for about an hour and then compare the temperature of the water in the two boxes by touching it. The water in the black box is warmer than that in the white box. This tells us that a black body absorbs more heat than a white body. Let us study how hot things are hot and cold things are cold in thermos flask. We use a thermos flask for carrying hot tea or coffee to someone in the hospital or while we are traveling. How is the flask constructed? It consists of two thin glass bottles fitted one inside the other. The inner surface of the bottles are silvered to shine like a mirror. A vacuum is created in the space between the two bottles by removing all the air from it. A plastic cock lid is provided to fit on the mouth of the bottle. The temperature of the substance placed in such a flask does not change and hot things remain hot and cold things remain cold for a long time. The Function of the Thermos Flask As there is no medium in the vacuum between the two bottles, no transfer of heat can take place by conduction or convection. Radiant heat is reflected back inside from the shiny surface. Glass and plastic are bad conductors of heat. Hence, they do not transfer heat either into or out of the bottle. Thus, transfer of heat does not take place by any of the three modes, namely conduction, convection or radiation. Hence, hot things in the flowers remain hot and cold things cold. Thermoware These days, we get special thermoware containers for keeping food hot. These containers consist of two boxes fitted one inside the other. The outer box is made of plastic while the inner one is made of shiny metal. There is air between the two boxes. Air is a bad conductor of heat. Thus, heat is not lost by either conduction or conviction. Also due to the shiny inner surface, heat is reflected back inside. The container has a plastic lid. This also prevents any transfer of heat. Thus, food placed in a thermoware container remains hot for a long time. Good and bad conductor of heat. Activity Wrap a metal disc of the size of a 1 rupee coin tightly inside a cotton handkerchief. Now, hold it over a candle flame. You will see that the handkerchief does not burn but the disc becomes hot. What is the reason for this? The disc is made of metal. All metals are good conductors of heat. The heat received from the candle is quickly absorbed by the disc. As the cotton cloth does not get heat, it does not burn. From this experiment, we conclude that cotton cloth is a bad conductor of heat. Substance through which heat travels easily and quickly are said to be the good conductors of heat. Copper, iron and aluminium are good conductor of heat. Ice is kept in sawdust to prevent it from melting. Sawdust is a bad conductor of heat. Substance through which heat travels very slowly are called bad conductors of heat. Soil, wood, glass is bad conductor of heat. Summary The transfer of heat from one place to another takes place in three ways conduction, convection, radiation. 
water gets energy due to heat. Substance through which heat travels easily and quickly are said to be the good conductors of heat. Substance through which heat travels very slowly are called bad conductors of heat. So, that is all in this lesson. Keep learning. Learning is fun.